Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today's video has been a little bit interesting to say the least. So some time ago, most of you are probably aware if you followed my channel, I bought a couple of Ryzen APUs, both the R3 uh, 2200G as well as the R5 2400G and the cooler that those chips ship with is the Wraith Stealth cooler, which is uh, very low profile and tiny great for HTPCs, but also very low on the cooling capacity side of things. And one of the nice things about Ryzen chips is that you can actually overclock all of the different SKUs of them, but with such a puny cooler on this thing, as well as uh, the uh, IHSs on these chips not being soldered like other Ryzen chips are, it leaves a lot to be desired. Now, I actually on purpose never touched these coolers and I have two of them because I had two Ryzen APUs that I bought. And the reason I didn't wanna touch these things is because I also wanted to test out the cooling capabilities of the thermal interface material, the TIM, that comes pre-applied on these coolers compared to something aftermarket that may be a little bit more expensive, more premium than the uh, thermal paste that comes with these things. So I wanted to try that out as well. Now for comparison's sake with these things, I wanted to also take a look at the thermals of my uh, Arctic Freezer 33 Esports One. This is a tower cooler that I have taken a look at in the past, it was provided uh, by Arctic. Thanks again for that, guys. And first of all, I already knew that this thing would definitely outperform the Wraith Stealth by a lot, but what I didn't realize was by just how much. So the testing started out as an overclock comparison, such as uh, at 3.8 gigahertz with the GPU at 1600, megahertz what kind of temperatures would this guy get versus the temperatures that this guy got and what i found really quickly is that this guy had a, a dnf it did not finish while this guy came in at very reasonable temperatures under full load on the gpu and cpu side of things so at that point this video actually shifted to just how bad is the uh, Wraith Stealth cooler that comes with these Ryzen APUs? So at first I actually dropped down the overclock on the chips as well as the voltage on them. And what I found was even by dropping the overclock down, these coolers are still outmatched by the APU when it's overclocked really at all. So at that point, the test changed over to at stock speeds, what can you expect in an open air test bench with these coolers as well as the second part of the test was is the thermal interface material, again, the uh, thermal paste here, any good on the stock coolers? So the conclusion of these tests combined together, first off, is that the thermal paste on the Wraith Stealth coolers, uh, it's just fine, you know, uh, unless you're replacing it with something extremely premium, it seems like the thermal paste is not actually holding these coolers back at all. In fact, it's doing just as well as something aftermarket like is used with the uh, Freezer 33 again, which isn't the most premium out there by any means, but it's just fine. So I wouldn't necessarily run out and buy a $10 tube of thermal paste to replace on the Wraith Stealth cooler. But one of the problems with including the Wraith Stealth instead of the Wraith Spire with these chips is you have almost no overclocking potential at all, especially Especially if you're in a chassis that doesn't have the type of airflow that you can expect in an open air test bench, which is almost all chassis. Now, some chassis do have pretty good airflow, but for the most part, you're not going to be able to overclock these chips hardly at all with the Wraith Stealth cooler and certainly not going to be able to up the voltages at all. So my recommendation, actually, if you're buying one of these APUs and maybe you don't need to do it immediately, but they actually overclock pretty well, especially on the GPU side of things, and you can get quite a bit of extra performance from these APUs in gaming by overclocking that side of these chips. So what I would recommend doing is buying yourself about a $30 cooler, maybe a little bit cheaper if you're really on a tight budget, so that you can get a really solid overclock with these chips and definitely obviously pair them with a B350 motherboard, not the A320. So that is really it guys. If you're picking up one of these APUs, which I'll link several of these products in the description below, including the uh, eSports uh, One cooler that I also uh, test it out here. If you're interested in any of those, links are in the description below. But recommendation here is buy the APU, and if you absolutely have to, sure, stick with this cooler for a little bit of time, but as soon as you get the chance, go ahead and upgrade that cooler because you'll see a nice little performance boost when you do that. So it's time for me to get on out of here. If you like this content, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment if you happen to have one of these APUs, definitely let us know down below what type of overclock you're getting on them if you've overclocked them at all. You can also follow me on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.